Welcome to Health Impact Live. I'm really looking forward to hearing about your work and what you do for our participants as a Black registered nurse, Lyo George. Hi. Hi. And um, she has worked to ambitiously fight against the systemic issue that impacts mothers. As we know, um, health outcomes show a huge disparity for Black mothers compared to white mothers. So she's created an app to help you thrive in pregnancy and to actually enjoy it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, most importantly, to drive like a better experience and better outcomes yeah. and overcome some of that, that gap. So I am looking forward to sitting down with you and talking about Wolomi, the digital community. And if you want to introduce your, yourself and, and tell us a little bit about that, that would be awesome. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Lyo George, and I am the founder of Wolomi. Wolomi is a companion app made for women of color, for women of color, made by a woman of color, for women of color to help us on our pregnancy journey, get joy and get better outcomes. So um, oftentimes it always feels like the healthcare system just takes over our pregnancy and our motherhood journey and tell us what to do and all of that. While, you know, that could be useful, um, but we wanna create a, a, an environment where moms are feeling like they are part of the journey, that they are able to own that journey and they know what is needed. Um, to own that journey so that they could get the kind of outcomes that they want. So at the end of your pregnancy or your, or, you know, your kids are like three years old, we want you to look back and say, you know, I really had a great experience. I had the best doctor, the best midwife, you know, I had the best team um, and it was a great experience. And that's what we want. You know, oftentimes we focus on the death part, which, you know, is also traumatizing, um, you don't I know want to die, me. but also it can be bad even if you don't die. Yeah. And so the, the, it shouldn't be, the status shouldn't be, oh my gosh, I didn't die. That's like, the, that, that shouldn't be the, the goal. The goal, it should be, I had a great, I had a great journey. I felt impacted. I felt like this was something, a meaningful experience. I'm bringing life into this world. And I was very much part of it. And so for us, um, that's what we are all about. Um, we are about supporting the moms. We do, our clients are moms and health insurance and employers, but we're kind of, uh, I guess the B2B, B2C. And um, sometimes mom, moms can also um, come to us directly on our website. So that's how we started. And that's a, a key part of who we are. We're, um, but I, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how the, the name um so I, I think yeah um, let's talk about the name I was thinking about what you're saying with joy too like because I we used to joke when I was pregnant I'd be like you go to the doctor and you're like hey I'm bleeding out of my eyes and you're like well you're pregnant so you're fine <laughs> yeah like, and I was talking to some of my friends who were black mothers um in Utah at the time and I think they had different experiences like it's that feeling where it's like you go there with that and get that same advice it's like whatever's happening that's just pregnancy but that might not be true. Like maybe yeah. someone's not listening to you. So yeah. I, I'd love to hear about, about the name and about the community. Like how do, you, how do you create that environment where people can check it and advocate for themselves and know what's normal and what's not? Yeah. So the, the name of, uh, so the name comes from a Yoruba word, Yoruba um, from Nigeria. Um, it's called, uh, so when, when a mom has a child, um, when they're pregnant, when they have a child, normally it's a greeting that says happy dipping hands in water. So it's the, I, this idea that the community rallies around you and you, they always, you know, they, they have the cloth diaper, they're washing that, um, they're giving the baby a bath. There's a whole ceremony behind the first bath, you know, and, you know, they give them the, the cooking for the mom. So everything is, has to do with water. You're always washing your hands, dipping your hands in water. And so we wanted to bring that back, the, the community effect of it, the joy of it. Um, fundamentally, that's who we are. We're thriving community. And so, 
um, we shorten it to dipping hands in water. So like, uh, so that's wallow me literally means dipping hands, hands in water. So um, just again, that idea of a community. And so how do we, how are we building that community? So I want to say like, we're, we're, we're working hard on it. Um, and so the fundamental things for us is creating a safe space. So a lot of our events um, are moderated by um, healthcare, uh, healthcare specialists or maternal health specialists. So we have something called pregnancy circle. Our pregnancy circle is either moderated by a midwife, doula, or a therapist. So again, for us, mental health and how, you, how you're getting there is very important to us as, as, as much as the outcomes that you get. And so we're making sure that we're integrating all of those things. So in, the, in that community, most of our events are digital. And so in a, on the platform, you get on the app, you know, you RSVP for the event, and we just created an environment that's not like the healthcare system uh, where, again, you, you, you feel like, okay, something is wrong with me. And, it, and they're like, yeah, you're just pregnant. And then <clears throat> a few months later, you find out yeah, that- you're like you're pregnant, yeah. You have a large parasite. Yeah, like, but then sometimes it's more than that, right? Like that's right. what trips up. That's that's the problem with black and brown women. It's like it's more than that, and nobody cared to look and ask more questions. Um, and and we find out that research shows, like in white women, they do ask more questions. They do take it seriously. Like, I, I was attending a. Um, a webinar at Johns Hopkins where they were talking about cardiac problems in pregnancy, they find out that even when Black women actually complain about the same symptoms that are supposed to be what you talk to your provider about, there is delay in initiating that care. And we know anything cardiac, initiating care in me, as you hear about it is very important. That's what is causing the disparity in um, pregnancy related cardiac issue when you look at um, white women versus uh, in comparison to black women. Um, I was thinking about also, um, there are a lot of disparities. Also our maternal health outcomes are just not great across the board. And I yeah. like what you're doing too with, um, I like what you're doing with community because the mental health of mothers during pregnancy has such a huge impact on health outcomes yeah. and quality of life. Yeah. And being able to create a stronger community, I feel like in healthcare right now, like it's kind of trendy to be like, oh yeah, we have to like, you know, worry about the whole person, but they're not very good at doing that. So yeah. Yeah. I, I like and, I, and I think the thing about community is it also creates an avenue to bring up that problem, right? right? For example, like, okay, so I went to my doctor. I I said, you know, I don't feel that great. But they said, yeah, it's because of pregnancy. But then in that atmosphere, we are able to also say, you know, this and this is what I'm feeling. And then what one of the things is somebody else can say, oh, you know, I felt that. And this is what it actually, maybe you should ask about this. Because we right. always want to strengthen that provider provide a mom relationship so as much as we can give the mom um, the words and the tools to ask the right question to press harder the way the way to press harder so um so that's kind of what it is um so you're like empowering moms with mm -hmm. like so they know because not every mom knows the right way to ask yeah or or, or the right way to escalate right and it's not um, obvious yeah, it's not. I, I always joke that it almost seems like you need to get another degree just to be pregnant. Like, right. I need to you, be. Yeah, you it's crazy. Your nursing degree. I wanted to talk about that too. Like, you have a nursing degree, you're a registered yeah. nurse, and you are now also an entrepreneur. Um, what tips do you give people? Yeah, who wants to kind of um, get into that space? Um, I think. For me, uh, what one of the most important thing is being making sure that if you're, for example, if you're a bedside nurse and you're kind of thinking about entrepreneurship or you're thinking about what you want to do, the first the first step is finding opportunities 
that are not solely bedside, but finding opportunities that are available where you are um, that allows you to be seen and heard outside of the bedside. So for example, if there's a com committee, like maybe the hospital, -wide, well, um, there's a hospital-wide in in um, initiative that's like, oh, we need volunteers for this. We need somebody to champion this. We need someone to champion that. That's the first step, like stepping out and and being in the in the space where so smart. you find other interdisciplinary people, the administration, the this people that are talking and having conversation. That will start to pique your interest in what what how things are run. Number one. What are people most worried about? The leadership, um, the people who actually running the the hospital. Uh, what they what the because one of the things that I, I on my journey and I'm working and with a lot of uh, nurses is that and clinical people, not just nurses, clinical people in general. We don't all while we make the best um, healthcare entrepreneurs, but we, we're not naturally the best healthcare entrepreneurs yeah if i can say that because we are so focused on helping that one individual doing our job well and we don't always think about anything outside of that like how different things manifest to create to create a successful hospital to create a success so like one of the things i did was um, of course, making sure that you're volunteering for things that gives you exposure to administrators and people who are making different decisions in the healthcare setting. And another thing is I actually, not that you need to do this, I actually went back and got my master's in healthcare administration. Yeah, so I could start to think about the healthcare system and how to, how to make that work. And from there, that's how, actually how I got introduced to entrepreneurship. That was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to, one, one, one thing that I started with was because I realized people making the decision in the healthcare system didn't necessarily look like me. And a lot of the people that they're making the decision about look like me. And so I felt like, that- Yeah, that's true. The people, make, <laughs> the people responsible for making the changes that are necessary to, to improve your life are the people who are impacted least. And, and and it's not that they cannot make the best decisions, but you don't know the community. You don't know what is really affecting and impacting what would make the best. Even even honestly, even me, I have to continue to learn. And, and I'm I'm I have lived experience of being birth and white black in America. Um so that's the path I wanted. I wanted to be at least make myself available. I have the clinical experience and I was like, okay, I wanted to make myself available so that I felt as qualified to make, to have solutions that would improve lives um, in the healthcare system. So I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to, um, you know, go to the C-suite and be able to make those impactful give my experience and my clinical experience um, so that we can make better decisions that can actually impact people um, that we are that we know that the the population is expanding and so there's a need for that um, and so that's why I went to to I wanted to learn how to run a healthcare business you know not as an entrepreneur but I, I met a, a professor who was teaching us uh, social entrepreneurship and all of that things and I was working, my thesis in grad school was working around um, improving maternal health care. At that time, I was pregnant. And, and so my thesis was all around that. And, and so my professor was like, you know, every time we had an assignment, um, so like at the business school and we had business classes and all that, I would pitch. Like oh. the classes always involve a, a pitch and I will pitch about, it's always about maternal health. And my thesis is about maternal health. So he just basically said, you know, why don't you think about a, a life in entrepreneurship? And I was like, no, <laughs> I want to make money. You you sound like you're you sound like you're calling me to a life of like permanent like brokenness. And I do not want to do that because I want to. I have student loans. You know, my husband has student loans. I'm 
doing this two years already. I, I'm not having any income. And so anyway, he, he, he um, at the end of graduation, he basically said to me, he was like, I, um, I don't have money to give you, but I can introduce you to people who you can actually talk to and verify your ideas and all of those things. So you feel supported and I would do it free of charge. And so that's how I started this journey. So um, I think my, what my, to, my um, sort of advice would be to stay cu curious outside of the one-to-one -one, um, clinical care and learn how business and healthcare works, I think. I love that. Like you have to stay curious. You have to be able to, also it helps you be able to bridge the gap, like be able to speak the language they're speaking. Yeah. And it also sounds like you were able to listen to people who believed in you, you know? That's a big leap of trust. Like, you know, you're like. It was, <laughs> it was hard. It was hard, but you know what? Sometimes you know that what else? My husband, he he told me he told me once, like when we were talking about it, he was like, "What else are you gonna do? You're gonna go back to work, and you're gonna always want to make change because you feel like you know you have the idea, you you know what you know what's gonna work. You want to test something out, and somebody's gonna tell you no. You're gonna be frustrated, and then you're gonna want to leave. So like, you might as well just do this. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to a founder once actually who talked about that. Um, I was like, maybe I should just do something easy, like, and relaxed. And she's like, here's what I found. Like, you got to know who you are and know your audience. Like what you're going to do, if you do that is you're going to be doing the same work. You just aren't going to be getting recognized. So satisfied. Where you are. Yeah. Yeah. And um, speaking of satisfaction, I was, a, we've spoken to a lot of nurses, you know, and I don't know if you've heard the news, but people are leaving <laughs> healthcare. <laughs> Which part of me is like, they're taking back the power, this, the power, the the idea that this is not going to work the way it is and has yeah. to change. Um, tell me about that. Was that part of your journey? It sounds like you also have like something inside, but also, would you tell nurses now that are like, they feel trapped, they have student loans, they don't feel like they can help patients? Like, what do you tell those people when they're when they're getting to know the healthcare system and it's not working for them. Yeah. I think you have to always know your why. Even even now that I'm here, um I don't so a lot of us go into healthcare because we love people and we love to help. And that's what started our journey. And so I would say that the first step is not to leave unless you truly feel like um, this is not your calling. So like one of the th reason why I left bedside is because I always from the beginning wanted to be a public health nurse. And so I wanted to, my, when I went to undergrad, I started as a public health person, but then I, I also felt like, okay, um, I don't know how much impact I'm gonna make just public health. -y. My mom was a midwife. And I was kind of curious about that. Um, and so I didn't feel like I could make a lot of impact just public health. -ing. Whenever I was out there talking to people, I felt like a lot of people who I looked around and I saw the, the person in charge of public health in the District of Columbia is like a clinical person, you know, like, so I started to think like, um, if I, I've always wanted to make the best, the most impact that I could make. And in order to do that, I, I felt like, okay, I needed to go into, to understand clinical background. So that's how I got into clinical. Again, my mom was clinical as well. She, um, she's a, she's a nurse. She's, she doesn't practice, practice midwifery now, but, um, but when I was growing up, she was a midwife. Um, so that's how I got into it. So it was easier for me to leave. Of like mothers, you know, I love that. <laughs> it was easier for me to leave because that was not my first love. So I am, if we're speaking to people where bedside nursing is their first love, I know a lot of people like that. Um, don't get driven away because, because you're having all those other challenges. Think about your why. I say that to say that even when I'm here, um, 
I also miss people, miss listening to people and being there for them the hard when 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 times are hard and just being there that's what feels me and so one of the things that I've been working with my coach on is um to join our pregnancy circles or our feeding lounge once a month you know just join as not as Lyle the founder just as Lyle somebody who is there to listen and support other moms and pour into other moms right and, and, and so that doesn't change your why of going into healthcare, if it's truly to help people and support that, it's not gonna go away. So if you feel like truly the, the better is what you wanna do, there are a couple of options, right? Um, if you're a registered nurse and you feel like, okay, the, I'm not really getting recognized, I feel stuck. Um, Think about getting an advanced degree, finding out the hospital paying for the advanced degree where maybe you could become a, a, a nurse practitioner or something where you have more autonomy and you can make decisions. Um, or uh, so you feel like you have more control. So you have to figure out what it is that's giving you burnout, that's giving you less satisfaction. Because the fact of the matter is we do need bedside nurses right? We, knew, we need people, um, clinical people oh, to do yeah. clinical things. Um, if that's your true passion. So that I'm speaking to those people who that is your true passion. If your passion, to be honest, is to make money, some people come into it because a degree in sociology is not going to pay the bills. No offense to people with sociologies. They needed something. My sister that, has that, but she's an attorney. No, no offense to <laughs> that, right? Like, like that was, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I wanted to do public health. Like I said, I wanted to do public health with the under with the concentration in anthropology. Then I right. had my come to Jesus moment where I said, you need to get a job when you graduate. That's gonna so like there's some people like you know, that's the same reason why we tell people to go to trade school, go to associate school, go to, you know, like and get something that's gonna pay your bills in this economy. And also so sometimes I think it's not just that. I think it's also the change. Like you have to look at where you're going to actually be able to do the things you want to do. And it's not always the system you thought about. Yes. So, so for those people, right. For those people, um, again, I, I, I think that just remember that your why would never, your why will always need to be fed. So even though you, find revenue, find other ways. I mean, we kind of talked about what other, how you can start to grow your other ways and and while you're feeling your curiosity you will figure out what where you need to go um and how to stay passionate but i think the most important thing is if your reason is is from uh, to make more to make money and and have a sustainable lifestyle um look at other spaces like for example i know people who became uh, nurse anesthetists they're making a lot of money you know travel nurses you know like so even for people who love bedside nursing right it, travel nurses can give you a lot of freedom right where you only think about the money that, <laughs> you're doing what you love and you're you doing what you love and then and you're also getting way way, way way reward for it and that you could use that income to feed your passion somewhere else right like it's you know, not always, it's I feel not like black or white. All, oh, right. I feel like it's also applicable to your creation process. Like you saw something you wanted, like you wanted to improve like health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Like, and then you had to get there. How did you find that? Like, did you look at technologies that exist? Did you look at your history? Like, how did you? you know? Yeah. How did I get to the technology part? Also, everyone I know that that is talking about this, we talk about health disparities. There are so many guidelines. But then when you talk to people, they're like, just like, can you just tell me what to actually do that would help this? Yeah, I think you have to listen. And I think nurses, honestly. Well, that's tough. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I think nurses, honestly, at the best at, at it, we are, we are with the patients all the time. We know what's needed. Um, and you have to take it a day at a time. So again, I started with 
okay, I know best side was not my thing. Honestly, I wasn't the best best side person. Um, like, to be honest, I, some people are like that. It's, I mean, like not the compassion part, but the, like the skill sets part wasn't the actual, actual, yeah. The actual yeah, it wasn't skill. quite clicking for me. So I knew again, you know that you know where you're supposed to be, um, and so what I what I started to do was find a, uh, I find a job outside of Bedside where it was uh, an innovation job. At that time, there was a healthcare um, clinic that was that got a grant from the federal government to do innovation work in the community. So again, they were looking for nurses. I, I took that opportunity, and from there is where I said it. So it was a small, it was a small uh, innovation hub where they had, we had a few nurses who were leading the um, care coordination at the time. And then on, uh, in the same office near us was the IT people. And so that's where I started to learn. We were developing our own platform they, at that time. So that's where I, that pick, again, be curious um, because you might just find your way out. <laughs> um, and so, so I started to talk to them. How, what, it, what are we developing? What is this thing? What is that thing? And so that's where, um, so that's where we started to, um, de- I started to learn about IT. And then um, when I was in grad school, um, so I started to learn about health IT and you know, learn more about it. And then when I was in grad school, one of the thing is that, um, one of the thing my professor said it to us was like, not a solution is not just, Oh, I'm gonna throw an app at it. So when we, so <laughs> that's not a solution. So when we first it. started, yeah, when we first started Wallow Me, it started with a walking group um, because I wanted to listen to people um, mm-hmm. and listen to what their needs are. And then from there, um, we had a, a pop-up event. And from there, so from the feedback that people told me, so talking about where to start, the fee- feedback that people told me from the walking group, we developed uh, a pop-up event. And with a pediatrician from that pop up event, we went to WhatsApp group and because people wanted to stay connected. And from that WhatsApp group, we developed that. So it's a journey. So yeah. just start, start somewhere and get that. mentors and support. And people. Yeah, just start somewhere and stay curious, like look yeah, outside yourself. Curious, yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled. Like I'm going to be obsessed with this app and this community. Um, yes, please. I just think it's such an important thing and it's something people are looking at now for good reason. Yeah. And, and um, just so, so we support um, moms, anyone who, who, who needs to help, but we focus mostly on women of color, which means sometimes people always think that's just black women. No, it's, you know, Hispanic, Latinx. Um, it's good for me to say that. I'm like, I'm white as a tube sock. So <laughs> half, I mean, half whatever, half. you know, like, um, you know, uh, anyone who who feels like they fall in that category and that can look any kind, you know, differently. Right. So, um, uh, so, so that's that's who we support. Um, yes, you know, um, I am black, and a lot, you know, and we, we do have a, quite a, a big a big part of our community is are black, but um, we welcome anyone who falls in that spectrum because we know. While the black outcome is worse, but there it's it's there is there's a spectrum of bad, <laughs> you know, like that yeah. we have in the U.S. We have a lot of work to do in the maternal health space. Yeah, the communities matter. Well, yeah. for all the, of those listening, at 4 p.m. today we have our live um, roundtable. So if you have any questions or if you want to like start using Wilomi at your healthcare organization or individually um, reach out and thank you so much for coming and for your story. Yeah. Thank you. Um, (laughs) People can find us um, on Instagram at Wallamy app, or um, we are on the um, play store, iOS, Android. um, And also they can just email us on our website, um, www.wallamy.com, which is W O L O M I. Thank you. I'm looking it up. See that? Oh, look, I found you. Yeah. Well, let me at, well, let me at, yes, please follow us. Yeah. And I'll um, find that also on, I'll share that as well on our, yes, our social please. network. Please. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming and thank you for this work. Cause it's really important. Oh, thank you. Thank you.